The American football is by far one of the most unique balls in all of sports. For starters, it's not really a spherical ball shape, and it has gone through many transformations and evolutions. In this video, we're going to be focusing on how this ball came to be and how it changed over time. Our story actually starts in the 1540s, at Stirling Castle in Stirling, Scotland. Take a look at this dinosaur. Well, it's not a dinosaur, it's a pig, but not pig skin, ironically. That thing is a pig's bladder. Crazy enough, footballs are most never made out of actual pig skin. They're usually made out of cowhide, but American footballs and soccer balls do share a common ancestor, being a literal pig's bladder. Pig bladders were inflated with air throughout medieval Europe and used as a ball to be kicked and tossed around. This later evolved into rugby and soccer, but those are different sports. Let's fast forward to the first American football match that took place on November 6, 1869. Nice. Between Princeton and Rutgers College. Now this is the very first game, don't be too impressed. Carrying and throwing of the ball was not allowed at this time, so this game seemed very similar to a soccer match. Thus, the first American football looked a lot like soccer balls did in the 1860s. However, illegal and experimental passing was being attempted in the 1870s, and slowly the ball adapted to be suited for throwing. This is where Richard Linden comes into play. He was a shoemaker who introduced manufactured inflatable balls, and he and invented a football that was easier to throw, carry, and punt. These footballs were shaped like plums, and if you notice any white balls during this time, white balls were popular during the night so they could be easier to see while in the air. Passing was officially legalized for the sport in 1906, and major rule changes required major ball changes. Here's what a football from the 1911 season looked like. The ball was officially a prolate spheroid, which is like a fancy word for egg-shaped. This elongated sphere allowed outer leather casing to be formed tightly over a somewhat smaller tubing, and this thing was pretty easy to throw. Fast forward a few years, and a significant change to the football occurred in 1934, when the ball was tapered at the ends and reduced in size around the middle due to a rule change. And yes, it was the major updates to what is considered a fumble, especially in the process of a hand-to-hand -hand forward pass, but that's for a later video. This new, sleeker design made it easier to handle, particularly for passers, but it also made the drop kick unreliable and obsolete. So you know what that means, it's time for yet another update, but not just yet. Yet. Hugh Shorty Ray, a college football official at this time and later the NFL's head of officiating, is often credited for inventing the pointed football. Okay, now let's jump a few years and introduce the Duke. The official game ball of the National Football League has been stamped with this nickname the Duke since 1941. Except for the period from 1970 through 2006, the ball was named after Wellington Mera, the longtime owner of the New York Giants, who was named after the Duke of Wellington by his father, Tim Mera, founder and first owner of the Giants. But what's so special about this Duke ball and why is it different from the 1930s balls? Believe it or not, these footballs were handcrafted, not machine made. You would think this is a step back, but really it's a step forward for precise quality. At this time, the official Duke footballs were manufactured in the Wilson factory in Ada, Ohio, and to make just one single football, it took a little over two dozen people to work on one ball at a time. These balls were handled with care. And yes, there was some competition, especially with the AFL, and before we move on, let's talk about the 1960-69 through 69 AFL football. According to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the AFL football was slightly more tapered than its NFL counterpart, and during the first four Super Bowls before the AFL-NFL merger, both footballs were used as the NFL offense was allowed to have it as its football, so they were sharing both the NFL Duke and this AFL football. Eventually, the AFL and NFL merged, and it was time to settle things. We need one official football, and here it is. The Duke is back, Wilson is back, well, Wilson maybe never left. The important thing is that things look better than ever, but there are some slight nickname and design changes throughout the decades. But these are mostly aesthetic changes, not performance changes. The nickname was removed from the game ball upon the merger of the NFL and American Football League in 1970, but this name was returned in 2006 following the passing of Wellington Mara in 2005 as a tribute to him. Fast forward one year later, it's 2006, and we got the Roger Goodell football. The most recent and current official NFL football. Official NFL guidelines dictate that this ball should be 11 to 11.25 inches long and have a weight of 14 to 15 ounces 
Maybe a little less if your name's Tom Brady, that's a different story. So here is the evolution in history of the American football. Let me know what's your favorite football and what you want me to showcase an evolution of next. Possibly the helmets, possibly the jerseys. I would like to do more if you want to see more. Don't forget to tackle that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Touchdown Rewind and I'll fast forward to you later.